This is part three in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair a PDP 11-3 and in the previous video we found that there was a fault or what appeared to be a fault in one of the uh, memory cards that uh, when we tried to write a value of zero we were getting back a value of one zero zero four zero 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 that's in octal and that uh, panned out as we put different values in we tried to write uh, various values into that memory location and uh, each time it appeared that um, bit 10 was uh, stuck high if you're familiar with the way that the memory cards on these machines work then you'll know that uh, they actually use 16 one-bit uh, memory devices so that was uh, a fairly good clue that maybe we had an issue with one of the memory chips having failed. It's not necessarily the case, but uh, the more of these uh, you do, the more of a feel you get for what's causing various faults. Now, um, I was wondering for a, a short time whether or not uh, what we were looking at may have been in, in output rather than a memory space, uh, simply because this machine only has two 4K cards fitted, and the failure we were getting was at 20,000 octal. 20,000 octal is of course uh, 8,192 or 2,000 hex so is one byte above the 4k times 2 boundary in other words it's one byte above 8k uh, however because um, with PDP machines they did try to keep some kind of compatibility amongst common models um, I didn't think that was likely to be the case. This is incidentally why I refer to this as a PDP-11-3 rather than by the specific processor assembly that it has because that would be very confusing. And some of the PDP-11 uh, Mark 3s or Model 3s have a large full-width um, CPU card. This is the HD card, but they, they have a card this size. And um, it contains not only the CPU, but also it has 4K of RAM. And the reason they did that is uh, to allow some uh, high-speed scratch RAM. So normally the RAM cards are accessed through the, um, the backplane on the uh, PDP. The problem with the PDP-11 is it uses a, a shared address and data bus on the backplane. So it's, um, it's quite a lengthy process to move data around the machine. This machine's been used for a CNC controller. And if you're familiar with CNC controllers, you'll know that um, timing is fairly critical with them. You need to make sure that everything uh, appears to be running at exactly the same time. Otherwise, you'll get stepping in the controllers and uh, you'll get all sorts of uh, odd behavior and poor uh, machining. And because I knew that's what this machine had been designed to do, or at least this uh, OEM version, then it seemed very unlikely that uh, they would have deviated too far from that standard design. So I suspected that the area um, from 20,000 up was actually mapped to RAM and not something else, even though it only had 8K of RAM in total. And I'll come back to that when uh, we start testing the machine again later in this video, but um, I, I had a guess as to what was going on and uh, that turned out to be correct. And so what I did was um, locate which of the two memory cards was causing the problem. Luckily it was run right at the bottom of the stack. You can't remove these one at a time. You've got to kind of work your way down the stack because there's a ribbon cable or two going to almost every board. And I uh, got down to the uh, lower RAM card. And luckily, all the RAM chips in this particular card were in sockets, which is um, fairly unusual, but uh, obviously worked in my favor this time. And uh, so these 6504s, so they're 4K by one bit uh, chips. And so I started testing these. I'll just get the tester. Okay, so. Um, I don't have a tester that will do 6504s, but this particular tester will do 2141s, which are uh, pin compatible. So we'll use uh, it for doing that. 
and I've already done this I've been through all the ICs on this board so it does a full test it does um, uh, absolute memory uh, address check so it checks every single uh, memory location within the device and as you can see this one passes so that was the first 15 memory chips but what I found was that uh, one particular memory chip uh, failed. Now we were looking for um, bit 10 to have failed and this device um, did indeed come from that location on the board and as you can see it's failed and uh, it's always nice when it ties up and you get the same uh, device failing that you're expecting. So that device um, failed the test. I did order some more uh, some spares and uh, they came in today so I'll just test one of those now and as you can see that passes so I'll get the uh, board reassembled I'll get the boards put back into the machine and then we'll give it another uh, test and see how far we get. Okay, well it's actually about four weeks later now. Got a bit distracted on some other projects and finally got back onto this. So um, in the last segment I got the uh, lower memory uh, board up to the point where it should work. So the next thing we'll do is we'll just quickly test that with the terminal, make sure that the problem we were seeing before has indeed been resolved uh, and then what we can do is move on and start looking at the rest of the machine. Okay so we're looking at the terminal and as you can see I've booted up the PDP. It's not booting up correctly it's um, coming to this um, prompt. This is really the, the PDP microcode prompt and the way this machine is supposed to operate is it should boot straight into the welcome screen for the CNC control portion of the ROM. There's a ROM card in this machine that contains the CNC code and it should boot straight into that but uh, I'll come back to why it's not doing that later on. For now what I want to do is just test to make sure that we have indeed resolved the problem with the RAM card. And if you recall, the testing I was doing was just to write some values to each location and read them back. So we'll try that again. So this is the first location in the second RAM card, the one that we've repaired. And that's the current value. It's just been booted up, so it's got a random value. And if I try to set it to zero, we move on to the next address and we'll read the back value back I've just written and you can see it is now reading zero as before we were getting a stuck bit. I'll just try and change it to a different value read it back and we are now able to successfully uh, change the contents of the RAM card so we've resolved the stuck bit issue I have tested all the bits and made sure that uh, there are no stuck bits or bits tied together. So both RAM cards are now working successfully. Now this comes back to um, why we're looking at a value of or address of 20,000 because that's of course above, well one byte above the 8k limit. And um, it's actually the first byte of the second RAM card. And of course what's going on here is fairly um, self-evident if I um, press enter we move on to the next address you can see that the address increments by two uh, and the reason for that is it counts the address in bytes um, but it's actually writing 16-bit words so it's two bytes or two byte addresses for each memory location so effectively we're going up to um, double the value you might expect which is why this is the first value in the second RAM card. So that's all working it's doing exactly what it's supposed to and um, what we need to do now is try and figure out why the machine will not boot correctly and it's fairly self-explanatory if you know how the PDP operates 
then the CPU card in this particular machine is configured so that address 24 so that would be um, 000024 in octal um, should contain the address that it's going to jump to to the user program but if we look at the, that address You can see it's got a value of zero and so that's what's um, being used as the startup address and it's causing the microcard uh, unit in the CPU card to halt and that causes it to reset and so it's jumping back to the start of memory and failing to boot up. We can force it into the CNC code which is what we've now done. This is what we should get by default when we boot up the machine, um, but it's not happening. As I said, it's, um, this gives us access, by the way, into the CNC code uh, system, but it's not working correctly. We're not getting any values showing for the encoders, um, but I suspect this is because we don't have the console connected, and the console is a, it's an intelligent console. It's got a microcontroller in it, um, but I don't have access to that. So if you are familiar with how the PDP-11, um, this is the HA version of the processor car, by the way, if you are familiar with the way these work, and in particular, if you have any experience with the CNC controller version of this machine, then comments are welcome as to what you think may be going on here. Um, but I'll go back to the machine and explain some other things that I found with this. But in the meantime, uh, as I said, the issue that we're having here is it just will not um, boot up and run the CNC code successfully. I can enter test programs successfully. They run just fine. And um, it does appear that the, um, the PDP itself is working. I have found some faults, which will go back to the machine now have a look at I'll explain what I found and then uh, we'll go from there okay so looking back at the machine I'll just turn it off because it is quite noisy okay so as you can see I've um, lifted out the add-on card that the owner's put in here this was just to allow him to uh, interface this to his logic analyzer um, I have had this attached to my logic analyzer. I have been doing a bit of work on this over the last few weeks and uh, found quite a few faults with it. Um, mostly hard board faults. There were just um, physical faults with the boards through whole plates uh, not being um, properly connected, that sort of thing. Um, obviously we had the faulty RAM chip and uh, all these things were causing various problems. Now. As far as I know, I've got to the bottom of all the hardware faults, so it now will um, boot up correctly, it will run test code, I can enter test programs, um, but I still can't get the CNC code to apparently run correctly. It won't read the encoders and it won't properly uh, load a, a tape from the reader, but I suspect that's because it doesn't have the console attached. Uh, and also the connection to the reader is very simplistic it just steps the reader forward immediately reads the value steps it again and there's no kind of handshaking to check that it's actually ready to uh, read the next bytes so i suspect that's why it may not be working properly through the rs232 if you know differently and um you're familiar with how to uh, interface these using rs232 then uh, please leave a comment um, but at the moment uh, the way this is uh, arranged there is no um, traditional front panel as you get on the PDP machine it uses a dedicated um, smart console that I don't have and um, so it has made uh, working on this quite complex um, but we are getting there it's just now trying to figure out if it still has any faults or if it's time to send this back to the owner it would be nice to get um, the unit booting properly into the CNC code. It is going into the CNC code. I can now run commands in the CNC part of the machine, um, but it won't 
try to drive any motors and it won't um, return any sensible values for the encoders. It's not, it's not really doing anything um, with regard to trying to access the CNC hardware but I suspect it's because the console's not plugged in and it's not happy that it uh, doesn't have um, part of the control element that it needs. So I think that's all it is. Um, if you know anything about these, as I said, then uh, please leave a comment. But um, in the next video, hopefully have a bit more progress and figure out uh, whether this is now working or not.